Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. Today I want to discuss Wake on LAN and if you haven't heard of Wake on LAN it is a protocol that uses something called magic packets that can wake up a machine from a sleep state or a powered off state on your local area network. And it's important to point out that Wake on LAN only works on a local area network and not across subnets and not across different address ranges and especially not across a wireless connection. So today we're going to talk about a product or a project called Upsnap and Upsnap is a self-hosted Wake on LAN app for your network. And so if you run a lot of home lab servers in your home and you're in need of a solution that can wake the systems over the LAN, Upsnap is a perfect solution. And one of the things you could do is you could take this application and offer it through Nginx Proxy Manager as a service. And then when you're away from home, you could power up a system that you needed to use that would be powered down with the use of this particular product. So basically it's a simple web-based LAN app that is performing the wake on LAN um, protocol. And so over here on their GitHub page, uh, it's pretty continuously updated. You can see here the last release uh, 4.2.11 was five days ago and today is June the 23rd, 2024. And so it is a currently supported product. So with that in mind, let's take a look at how we can install and configure Upsnap. We're going to install Upsnap in an Incas container. And so we're going to do an Incas launch images colon Ubuntu 2404, naming the container Upsnap. We're setting boot.auto start equal to true, which means that whenever the Incas server starts, the container for Upsnap will start. And then we're setting security.nesting equal to true because Upsnap is a Docker application that will be nested inside of the Incas container. And we're setting the default profile and also the bridge profile. And if you don't know what the bridge profile is, you want to watch my video entitled Incas Containers Step by Step. Now that the new container has been started, we want to do an Incas shell to up snap and once inside of the container at the root prompt you want to go ahead and do an apt update ampersand ampersand apt upgrade dash y which will update all of the repositories and provide any updates for the currently installed software next we want to install some dependencies for up snap and i'm going to install um, nano git net tools and open ssh server and i want open ssh server simply so that i can log into the system from the network later on to perform maintenance since upsnap is a docker application i want to install docker from the script on the docker website but it occurs to me that that uses the curl command and I forgot to install curl, so I'll do an apt install on curl. Next, I want to add a user account for myself, so I'm going to do an add user Scott. Give Scott a password. And then go ahead and put Scott in the sudo group with the user mod dash A capital G sudo Scott. And likewise put Scott into the Docker group so that I can use Docker commands without having to use sudo. Now I can switch the user over to the Scott account with an SU dash Scott. Now I want to clone the upsnap repository to my local machine and so I do that with a git clone command. If you now do an ls command you'll see that there is an upsnap folder so let's go ahead and cd into upsnap 
And if we take a look at what's in that folder, we have the contents of the repository that came from GitHub. So all we need to do is a docker space compose space up dash D. It'll go ahead and pull the container and start it. Let's check the address of the Incas container with an if config and you'll see that we're running on 172.16.1.102 in this particular case. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that address. Just to check and see that our container is up and running, let's go ahead and do a Docker PS. And we can see here that it started just about a minute ago and is healthy. Let's go ahead and go over to our web browser and paste in the address that we just found. And it's going to be colon 8090 because Upsnap is on port 8090. It comes up and says, welcome to Upsnap. We click next. And then we're going to go ahead and type in our email address. And we'll go ahead and type in a password. And then we go click create. And it says that I'm all set. And so I click let's go. And it comes up to the main dashboard. The first thing to do on the main dashboard is to add your first device. And so we're going to add a device named laptop and then we're going to go ahead and give the address for that laptop which is 172.16.1.143 and so it's really notable to point out that it's going to be very important that your device be a wired device because wake on land is not supported on wi-fi so we'll go ahead and paste the MAC address in of the wired Ethernet device on the laptop. And finally, I'm going to put in my net mask, which is 255.255.0.0. Yours will probably be 255.255.255.0 because you'll probably be on a 192.168 network. And so that's what it is. And then we look down here and Upsnap can also do port scans and Upsnap can also uh, give a click clickable link for your system. I'm not sure exactly if that works because I haven't really drilled down into that. They have an option to ping the remote machine and they have an option to um, wake according to a cron job on a schedule and then they support sleep on land and they also have a short script that will allow you to perform a remote shutdown and some NICs support having a password on them in order to do uh, wake on land and then finally we have the option to create some groups uh, if you have a large number of systems on your network so I'm going to go ahead and click save and it goes back to the main screen and simply says that the machine is powered down because of the red power button. And this is a really easy program to use. All you need to do is click to power the system on and it begins a countdown timer. And it looks like right after about 45 seconds, the system is up and running and we can tell that by the green light here on the dashboard. Upsnap also allows you to create other user accounts and then there is a settings section which allows you to set up things like the um, ping interval for systems to tell whether or not they're online and then you can change the title of your website which shows up here in the tab at the top of the screen and then you can also change your icon for the program as well. Then they have a number of themes you can change here. And I like the dark theme, and so that's what I'm sticking with. When we head on back to the home screen, of course here you have the ability to add other systems so that you can have all the systems available for which you want to do wake on LAN. 
And if we went ahead and added this system to Nginx Proxy Manager, you would be able to log on remotely with a subdomain name and then launch a startup for a system that would be powered down so you can use it remotely. Uh, the last thing I see here is the ability to edit your account and we have the ability to change your language, to change your password, and that's pretty much about it. I think that Upsnap will make a very nice addition to many folks' home labs because it gives you the ability to be able to allow for systems to be powered down and to save some energy and then power them up as required. Anyway, that's it for today. So please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.